culture trumps policy any day. We can change all the policies with, that we want, but we have to reinforce those through, through the culture of the department. And that is the message from Louisville's newest interim police chief, Paul Humphrey. He stepped into the role Tuesday following Chief Jacqueline Gwynne Villarreal's resignation. Her departure comes during an investigation into her handling of sexual harassment claims within her command staff. Chief Humphrey outlined reforms on how LMPD plans to move forward with future allegations. And our senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton were there taking a closer look at those reforms and the chief's response to being the sixth person to lead this department in four years. The men and women who work here are really, really good people. They're good hearted people who signed up to serve. We as a command staff are going to do everything in our power to make them proud to be part of this department. An 18 year veteran at Louisville Metro Police now leading the department for the foreseeable future. Interim Chief Paul Humphrey. We've had too many self-inflicted wounds over the years. Mayor Craig Greenberg telling us the now former police chief, Jackie Gwynn Billaroel, handed in her resignation Tuesday morning. The news conference making it official just hours later. This is a new day. This is a new day for LMPD. This is a new day for Louisville Metro government. The decision comes amid waves of new controversy against LMPD. Three different sexual harassment allegations coming to light within two weeks. Two of them revealed in lawsuits. Now these three officers, Major Brian Kurger, along with husband and wife, Lieutenant Jeff Lauder, and Major Shannon Lauder, all put on administrative leave pending active investigations. Sexual harassment will not be tolerated in LMPD or any part of Louisville Metro government. Also announced Tuesday, an overhaul to LMPD's policies on addressing sexual harassment. We're told allegations will now be handled similarly with how other branches of Metro government do. Claims can now be reported to anyone within the department, not just through supervisors. The mayor and interim chief say all officers will be required to complete new training. And finally, we're told resources and support for those impacted will be bolstered. We're committed to preventing and addressing any sexual harassment within our organization. Culture trumps policy any day. We can change all the pol policies with the, that we want, but we have to reinforce those through, through the culture of the department. You are now the sixth either permanent or interim chief just in the last four years. People have heard the talk before about changing culture. What can you say to the community directly to convince them that your words will be different this time around? Uh, I think uh, I've been here before, not in the position as chief, but I've been in front of you plenty of times. And I think everyone in this room can trust that what I've said, I've done. I have no problem admitting where I've come up short, um, and I have no problem putting in work to make sure that things improve. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11, on your side. Jacqueline Gwen Villarreal was the permanent chief for less than a year, named to the position back on July 20th of last year. The mayor says she will continue to be paid for the, about four more months. She was just making over $230,000, according to the Metro Salary Database. Mayor Greenberg says as of now, there is no search for the next chief because the department needs to focus on completing its consent decree negotiations with the Department of Justice. For links to our full reports on the sexual harassment allegations, you can click this story on the whas11.com homepage. Hours after the police chief shakeup, more news hit the department. A Louisville Metro Police detective now faces charges after a crash in Mount Washington. Detective Timothy Davis was arrested yesterday on a warrant charged with tampering with physical evidence, criminal mischief and reckless driving. Police said Davis left the scene of that crash involving his unmarked car while off duty back on May 18th. He was then placed on administrative light duty, but now on administrative leave. Training for TARC bus drivers wanting to drive for JCPS could begin as early as July 8th. That was one of the details discussed during last night's school board meeting as they broke down the transportation agreement with TARC. TARC is set to send about 70 drivers to the district, and if all of them take the jobs, Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio said service will be restored to the 7.30 a.m. magnet and traditional depots. But TARC drivers will not start until the third week of school. 
school. So Dr. Polio says you should still anticipate delays at the beginning of the year. It would be nearly impossible to add back to Depot and to be ready for the first day of school. So that's just something that wouldn't be possible. But we would like to be able to tell some kids that in you know two to three weeks you will have services back. Dr. Polio said the district would need more than 700 drivers to fully restore service, but currently it has under 550 drivers. So restored services will be given to students who need it most, starting in District 1. Polio also said 65% of routes have been completed and the district is hiring a traffic coordinator to make sure car lines run smoothly. Board members for Jefferson County Public Schools also approved a 5% raise for full and part-time employees yesterday. The new raises will be split into 2 and 3% raises over the course of the next two years. The first bump in pay takes effect July 1. The next will go into effect during the district's 2025-26 fiscal year. JCPS said overall that brings employee salaries up by 14% when accounting for the last couple of years. Right now, JCPS is also hosting another bus driver blitz hiring event. It's going on as we speak, a one-stop shop. You can apply, be interviewed, and get the required physicals all done on site. JCPS says dozens of new drivers have already been hired for the next school year, and applications for dozens of others are in the process. Still, the district would like to recruit more. I would say just go ahead and come on out. We have people here from the transportation department. They can ask questions about, you know, things that or concerns that they have or about the position. And then if they're interested, they can go ahead and do that application process and paperwork and interview in the physical. You are, are, you are asked to bring a driver's license, two forms of ID, a copy of your high school diploma or GED, avoid a check, and then two references. You can also apply online. That bus driver blitz goes until 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Norton Sports and Learning Center. Today, officials are celebrating Home Ownership Month by highlighting the city's REVERT program. That stands for Restoring Each Viable Economically Redlined Territory. Well, that's a metro government funded program to help families realize the dream of home ownership while restoring neighborhoods directly impacted by redlining. Since the REVERT program began 18 months ago, it's helped 17 people own their own homes. If your dream is to become a homeowner, don't give up keep going, keep pushing. There's plenty of money out here. I didn't think that I would be eligible for. They definitely made my dream come true. Officials said the goal of the revert program is to reach 216 Louisvillians and help them become homeowners.